Well, good morning. Some of you know me from before. Some of you have probably never seen me before. Either as it may, what we're going to talk about the scriptures today has to do with, uh, how would you say, dealing with uh, a breakup of your life. The readings, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're now towards the end of the church year, and they talk about the end times. And Jesus, if you remember, since probably back in May, every Sunday he's been working his way to Jerusalem. And he always would stop and use those opportunities to encourage his followers in lessons of discipleship. Well, last week, if you remember, he made it to Jericho, and that's the last stop before Jerusalem, and he had the incident with Zacchaeus. So now he's finally in Jerusalem. He's at the temple. And uh, people are gathering around, and they're looking around, and they're enamored with this great edifice, this temple in Jerusalem. Our ancestors, our Jewish ancestors, had a great respect for the temple as the dwelling place of God. It was a living symbol that God was with them. And it started a thousand years before Christ when King Solomon, the son of uh, King David, built the first temple. And it was seen as a, it was a, how would you say, again, it was a focus for the identity of the people. Well, that temple lasted over 400 years. But when they got in trouble with international politics between Babylon and Egypt, the Babylonians came in and destroyed that temple, 587 B.C. And they thought it was like the end of the world, and they lost their temple. Thousands upon thousands of people were killed in the city of Jerusalem, and it was taken over. But the cream of the crop, the five, ten percent that were literate, were sent off to live in Babylon. And they tried to hold on to their traditions as best they could, recognizing that God had abandoned them in their perspective. But they continued to uh, put their traditions together in a kind of written form. That's when the Torah was written the first five books of the Bible, to hold on to the teachings. And lo and behold, after a couple of generations, the Persians, present-day Iran, took over the Babylonians, present-day Iraq, and they allowed the Judeans to go back to their homeland. And they sent them back to, with the notion of rebuild your temple and establish yourselves as a province of this Persian empire that they had. And so they did that. It's around 515 B.C., they established the second temple. And uh, again, it was seen as a sign of the presence of God in the community. And then, King Herod the Great, who was the Edomian prince that Romans put in charge of the Jewish territories around the time of Jesus, Herod the Great, he decided, he was big on uh, urban renewal projects, you might say. <laughs> And he decided he wanted to rebuild his temple. So from the course of about 20 years before Christ, up in, for about 50 years, they were in the process of rebuilding this temple. And by the time Jesus was living, around 30 AD, the uh, temple was still under construction, but he had made great progress. It was seen as a, one, of, like the, one of the wonders of the world, to the point where they even had on the facade facing the east where the sun would rise, the facade was covered with uh, plates of gold. So when the sun came up, the thing was brilliant, like a sun. So no wonder they're if sitting there talking to Jesus, saying, look at this place, you know, it's great. <laughs> and what does Jesus say? They want to disappoint you, boys and girls. <laughs> but this ain't going to last. He knew that the animosity between the Roman occupational forces and the Judeans was coming to a fore. And sure enough, 30-some years after the time of Jesus, <clears throat> there was a revolt, and the Romans did come, and they tore down that temple. He just had that premonition. But he also wanted them to say, he wanted to say, you know, don't put your trust in this temple. Put your trust in the Lord. Rely on the Lord and rely only on the Lord because these things can come to pass. If 
going to be earthquakes and cry, you know, wars and everything else. But when the time comes when you're being persecuted, which was going on when this Gospel of Luke was written around the year 85, he said, uh, you know, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Because I will be with you to back you up and to help you survive. And that was the message. Well, part of the message is the only place you're going to be able to find security is your relationship with the Lord and not with the constructs that you build yourself. 1998, 99, or 1999, I guess it was, I uh, was assigned to this parish. And we had a good time. I was here 11 years. <laughs> and we uh, accomplished a lot of things. Put this whole addition on here. And uh, we developed a relationship with St. Edwards. Uh, Father Butler was living in the rectory at the time because they didn't have a rectory, so we were doing things together. We even hired that uh, a sister social worker to work with our young people, Sister Rose, if you remember her. And uh, she was a little wacky and sometimes, but, uh, <laughs> but she had an MSW from Syracuse, so I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. She knew more about it than I did. <laughs> things were going well. And I was beginning to think, well, what am I going to do now? I'm, you know, I'm getting approaching retirement age. And my mom uh, had given up her house in 97. She wanted to go into senior housing, so she sold her the homestead, gave me half the money, gave my brother half the money. So I just said, knowing as a diocesan priest, you have to find a place to live when you retire. I uh, purchased a townhouse up there in the Sheldon Hills. And I had about two-thirds of it paid for. <laughs> and I was thinking, this is all set. I'll stay here to the end of my, till I retire. And uh, all of you paid off the mortgage on this place. You were debt-free. Things were looking pretty good. And I got a call from the chancery. They said, we want you to go to Del Mar. I said, who the hell wants to go to Del Mar? <laughs> Things are right, just the way they are, you know? <laughs> this is my temple, see? I built my temple. I'm admiring it. <laughs> but the call comes. And being a, you know, enough of a team player in the dies, I said, okay, I'll go. So I went, and uh, I found there were things to do there. Place that had four million dollars in the bank, but they also had a roof that was leaking for six years, and they had a lot of, how would you say, capital improvement things that had been let go. So anyway, I got involved with doing all that stuff. But again, I think the point is that I did retire, and I still got my house in. Sheldon Hill, so you see me once in a while over at Fred the Butcher. I'm around, I'm in the neighborhood. <laughs> <clears throat> but again, it reminds me that, uh, you know, you, you kind of work things out and you get yourself a plan, you, you think you, you're all set, and all of a sudden it can fall apart. And it reminds me, there's an old phrase if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> I'm sure that happens to you as well. I think you got it all worked out. I think you got security in your own efforts. But the reality is, we're not in charge. Our lives are fragile. And we have to be able to, to uh, when push comes to shove and your temple gets destroyed, <laughs> you need to rely on the Lord. And that's the point of the readings today. First reading comes from Prophet Malachi. It's the last book of the Old Testament. And it comes at that time when they had come back from Persia and they were, they were from Babylon and the Persians had helped them reestablish that temple. But after a while, they got kind of lazy. And they began to uh, 
allow their religious fervor to diminish to the point where they're being unfaithful to the Torah. Particularly chapter 6 of Deuteronomy. Those take care of the poor, the widow, the orphan, and the alien who lives amongst you. That's God's word, chapter 6 of Deuteronomy. And they were not taking care of the poor, the widow, the orphan, and the alien who lived nearby. And so, Malachi says, the day of the Lord's coming. They used to think when the day of the Lord would come, God would take care of their enemies. But Malachi says, the day of the Lord's coming. <laughs> you better watch out, boys and girls, because you haven't been faithful. But, for those who have been faithful, the day of the Lord will be like the sun of justice rising with its healing rays. So when they go through calamity, it's not a question of everybody being in the same page, but those who have faith and those who have been faithful will survive and will bear witness to the goodness of God. Sometimes people have too much faith. That's what's going on in the second reading today. Thessalonians is written around 50, 51. And St. Paul was, had converted the people in that city, Thessalonica. And uh, <clears throat> he had gone on to other missionary projects, and he got word that there was trouble there. And the trouble was this. Some of the people in the community felt that Jesus was going to be coming back right away. So they quit their jobs. They're just going to say prayers. They're going to hang out. They're going to live off the common purse of the community. And what does Paul say? You have to follow the example we gave you. Paul, Sylvanus, and Timothy, he, this is written by these three people. He says, you have to pay attention to our example. We always worked. We didn't take for any free lunches. We wanted you to do what you're supposed to do. And so is the case for you religious fanatics who are just sitting on your duck waiting for somebody else to give you a free meal. See, their faith was exaggerated, as if God owed them a living. God will take care of us. But God helps those who help themselves, right? We all have work to do. I guess when it comes down to it, we all need to realize that uh, we can do our best to secure our future, to fix things and to, our own, to our own liking, to establish our own temple. But it's all built on sand. The only thing that endures is your relationship with the Lord and your faith that will sustain you when your spouse gets cancer, when your kid flunks out of college, when your job becomes in jeopardy, when your parents are drinking again. All kinds of stuff happens to all of us. And the question is, how do you deal with it? You bring it to the Lord. And you get the strength you will need for when the day of the Lord comes. So, it's a kind of a pep talk, the scriptures today. But it's an important one. That, uh, from my personal experience, don't tell God your plans because he's just going to laugh. <laughs> but in the meantime, make sure you still talk to God. Make sure you still have that relationship which will sustain you when you get knocked off your horse because <laughs> that makes all the difference. And that's what the readings are trying to tell us today. Let us stand and profess our.